Hey, welcome to today's episode. This is Robert LaFrance, and you're listening to the LaFrance Paradigm. Today's guest is Harrison Gray, and he is an awesome, awesome human being. I was so inspired and refreshed after having our uh, podcast session and getting to know more about Harrison and what he's doing for people. If you don't know and what you're about to find out is that Harrison's a veteran entrepreneur coaching people on their philosophies, their cryptocurrencies, and how to accomplish their goals. He's essentially a consultant with a huge arsenal of resources and strategies ready to tailor them to your unique needs, okay? So I wanted to come on here before today's episode and let you know that our episode has a lot of information, and I also want to let you know that Harrison has a great message, and I want you to really focus on what he's trying to share with you and try to overcome some of the staticky sound that we had some uh, audio issues during our recording. And I just want you to be aware of that there is a little bit of an audio staticky background noise, and it might crack when you listen in. I did my best that I could to, the best that I could to fix it. But just I want to give you a heads up so when you're really listening in and if there's some type of audio thing, I want you to be prepared to lower it in you, if you need. Okay, so I'm really excited to present this. Thank you so much for tuning in and showing your support. We really appreciate it and we look forward to helping you accomplish your goals. Take care. I, I, I'm one of those jack of all trades. Um, I, I did a lot of stuff over the last 15, 20 years. Um, so... You know, I've done like odd jobs, tow truck driving, detailing, retail, serving, cook, you know, uh, paving and grading, bartending, all of it, all the stuff that the normal person does on a nine to five job. I even went into the military, did six years, did my time, got out. When I got out, I learned that the shift, the shift isn't there. Um, going from active duty to the civilian side, not, a lot of stuff doesn't carry over. A lot of the experience doesn't really count. So basically, I was back to square one, uh, looking for jobs and stuff. And um, with a range safety officer what, for like $11 an hour at like $36, uh, 36 hours a week. Did you say a range safety officer? A range safety officer. Oh, range. On how, range. Oh, yeah. On firearms. Like, and, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, man, you protected people from weather? <laughs> yeah, range safety officer. <laughs> um, so, but, on too. But when I was doing that, it was um, it just wasn't cutting it. Like as far as financing goes, I mean, I loved what I was doing. I got to play with guns all day, and teach people how to use safety and, and how to use those firearms effectively. But it wasn't cutting it with the finances. So um, I got an opportunity to, to get into sales. It was the first time I ever got into sales. I never sold anything like that. Um, signing people up for uh, Safelink. So that's like the. Uh, the government assistant cell phones with data packages and stuff. So I was signing people up for that, making some pretty good money. But then that started to tank at sales. Um, so I went from there to um, life insurance. I did life insurance for three years in the field and in the uh, um, call center. And but I had the realization that I wasn't built for nine to five when I was at a call center selling life insurance and I came up with a script to make them a million dollars um, the next month over the previous year, just off the script alone. And wow. then, yeah, but they didn't want to compensate me for the, the amount of money that I made them. So I was like, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm better than this and I quit. Yeah. But that put me in a predicament like, okay, so now I need to really figure out what I need to do, what I want to do, what, what's my passion. So I'm not getting up every morning, dreading life. And so I started doing research. I said, what do I want? I want to be successful. I want generational wealth. Okay, so how, who, has, who has success and who has generational wealth? These people have it. These families have it. These companies have it. Okay, cool. What's the common denominator? Real estate and investing and mindset. Okay, what kind of, how do I get into real estate? What kind of investments am I good at? And what kind of mindset do I need to have? So I spent the next... 10 months of 2019, um, 20 hours a day, seven days a week, just soaking up all types of different knowledge about that whole industry and, and um, you know, success, where money comes from, how it's created, what fuels it, like the bond market, the stock market, um, the debt system, 
the Federal Reserve, central banking, the whole thing, uh, what interest is, what compound interest is, and so on and so forth. And then when I knew it all, like when I, I felt like I felt like I knew enough to execute, um, I did. I created Light Investments and Real Estate LLC, got a couple of partners under me, got some assets, leveraged those assets and purchased some more assets. Um, yes. Yeah, so I, I did that. And um, and then, uh, you know, I made those whole first business mistakes and uh, you shouldn't have done that. You should have did this and you shouldn't have spent that. You should have held it for this and and I was like, okay, well, let me get from under it. Um, so me and my partners dissolved the business, uh, got, you know, closed it down, um, sold all the assets and I started again. But this time I, I approached on the educational standpoint. Um, I don't want to teach people to get out of the rat race, get out of that nine to five and actually wake up wanting to get up. Yeah, man, that, um, you said so many good things and everything that you just said, like leveraging systems, waking up happy, you know, learning and then executing, you took a chance, you quit, you know, you took a chance and done yourself, you took a partnership, you learned some things, you had some failures, and then you saw what was right and what you wanted to do. So you got out from underneath it, and then you started again, you know what I mean, but you grew every step of the way, you were learning and taking on new resources and skills every step of the way to better prepare you and give you that confidence to, to continue going. And, yes. uh, it's incredible because people don't know it's crazy man like people just don't know that you can do that you know like people get in the rhythm they wake up this is their life they go to work for whatever reason to pay the bills like man i used to work at true green doing sales and like when i moved up to connecticut um from virginia beach right in the like right as covid was hitting everything like shutting everything down like I worked there for 30 days, but um, there was a guy there who's working, he was a hustler. He was there before everybody and then left after everybody. The guy had like four or five kids and he was doing good with True Green. Now I was pivoting. I was at True Green, not because I saw a long-term career and building a legacy working at True Green. It was a pivot to help me transition from my move and help support my family and our goals and buying a house here. And then like, I'm looking around and people are just living their lives. And I happen to have this knowledge and experience of, you know, personal development and the advantages of investing and real estate and sales. Like they, we're all in sales in this lines then of the true green sales, but the commissions aren't, you know, aren't anything that aren't anything life changing. You know what I mean? They're right. just like, it's like they're earning their own heat. And, um, there was one guy there who had a really nice BMW, like a really nice BMW. And from my standpoint, like that guy wasn't just making True Green sales. He was investing his money and his time outside of the office of True Green and going from there. You know what I mean? And you're looking at these young, you know, young adults, thirsty, wanting more, you know, freestyle and talking about their dream life on smoke breaks, you know, and like there's a guy here with a B nice BMW and these guys are driving like used cars like most people do, you know. And it's like nobody wants to talk to the guy who's driving the Beamer. Nobody wants to talk to the guy who's been in real estate since 2012 and figuring out how you can make 60 grand in four months or two years. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just crazy to see that people get caught up in this life of whatever, you know, grind and the rhythm and the daily needs or whatever, but they don't want to look past like, oh, wait, if other people are doing that, what are they doing? You know, how, right. how you know, and that's where people get into like, the limiting beliefs and their self-worth and their self-esteem or having a mentor or a team to show them how to do it so they can build that up, man. And absolutely. And I like to add that because I, when I transitioned out of the Navy, I was a diver for seven years. And when I got out into the real estate business, real estate, there's so much personal development in the real estate industry. Like if you want to make sales, if you sales in general, there's a lot of personal development and communication required. Mm -hmm. So that's where I kind of started going down this rabbit hole of personal development and using systems to, to leverage success. And oh wow, well, I just totally went blank. Oh, okay, military. Uh, I was, okay, so I got into personal development. I, I did this knowledge business blueprint with Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi, which is like extracting knowledge from people. It's personal development and success, like Success Magazine. That's what they do. Darren Hardy, he interviews people. Oprah, they interview people. They see what's working and then they share it with the world. That's, they're like an interviewer, right? 
Yes. And, I, and once I learned these skills, I said, I know exactly what community I need to bring this to. And that's the veteran community because, bro, like you went to boot camp. You, it's like you went into like a government. You went into the military, but you went into this institutionalized community where they stripped you of who you are as a person, made you all a team player. You, you know, you either kick in doors, you're crawling under barbed wire for training, you're shooting guns or, or whatever. You know, you can be a yeoman, a mailman, but you're still out to sea. You understand the risk that you're doing for your goals or your family. But then when we get out of the military, you don't know how to be an employee. You don't know how to be. You don't have a POD, man. Dude, yeah, yeah. But so, like, that's one thing that I had to realize. Like, yo, I had structure in the military. If I, if, in order for me to be a successful entrepreneur, I have to. Create your own structure. I have to create my own structure. And then I have to rely on the skills or the, you know, when I was learning how to teach submarine escape, I never thought that I'd be an instructor or someone who wanted to be on stage talking to people about bettering their lives. I was like, why am I teaching to an empty classroom? How is this going to make me be, be a better instructor? But they have, they put you in all these positions, whether you want to or not in the military. And in order for you to adapt and overcome, you have to pull something from inside you to get through it because there isn't no, there isn't a choice in the military a lot of times, you know what I mean? So it's like, right. well, Either you do or you die. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a few things that you can say no to, but you got to be smart about it. Like I got tired of mopping. I became the worst mopper in the yes. department. You know what I mean? Like you're not allowed happens? to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Oh, let's get LaFrance. He's great at cleaning the bathroom. Nope, not anymore. I don't know what happened. I <laughs> must have got lucky one day. But, but yeah, you know, that's every that, person. You're absolutely right. You're hundred percent. You're hundred percent right. And and basically what it all boiled down to is it's a perception. It's a perception and it's and it's a concept. So if you don't understand the concept you can't adapt for the shift if you can't understand the concept you can't uh, you can't adapt to any situation so what i did was when i closed down light investments um and i started harrison gray consulting it was it was a huge shift to really lean on the the, the concept and the, and the perception of every day of every aspect of your life um so it's not it's, it's not just that okay I, you bought a package to learn about crypto and st and stocks awesome mm -hmm. well we're not just doing crypto and stocks we're learning mindset along with it we're learning your miracle morning your 5 a.m morning your 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 self-discipline to your own schedule that you set and Reason for that is because if you don't, then it's gonna, especially when you're learning about investments and assets and 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 quadrants, it's it's too, it's a whole lot of moving pieces. So if you don't have, if you don't see the big picture, which the the pre, the premise of my entire company is the big picture and just navigate on the river that's already there. Right. Um, then you're going to you're going to get you're going to get that tunnel vision on one part of the picture and then you zoom back out and all of a sudden the rest of the picture is on fire <laughs> <laughs> so it, i i make sure that you know now that um now that i have launched that it's 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 really it's, it's a blessing but it's also um uncomfortable which is good you you want to be uncomfortable you want you want it to be um something that you've never done before because if you don't if you stick with what you've been doing all this time like you said you become um your belief system gets skewed your your what what is your reality isn't the reality what's what what the reality of it is that you can't stop what happens you just only can you can only control what what you do about what happens Yo, that's perfect timing. Like, the, like the only real is right now. Like, you know, the future is <laughs> your it. imagination, and the past is your memory, and like what you do with both of those is all to you. But the only thing that is real is right now, and what you're doing in this moment right now. What are yes. you thinking? What are you doing to either get closer to your goals or whatever it is that you're working on? What are you doing right now, and what is that going to do for you tomorrow? And that's right. 
what, what that's one of the biggest things like that's a concept you know and then you start practicing it and then like four or five six months down the road when something happens and you're like oh wow i have to give this my attention i'm so used to moving and having to pivot over the last you know 12 years of my life that starting over is what i'm used to yeah like I'm, I've noticed that I use words like, oh, I'm going to, or, you know, in that kind of, in that thing. And I'm like, what, at one point I realized like, listen, I need to start acting in the now. Like I am like, this right. is what I do. I am doing this. I am. Even and though then, you have plans on doing it tomorrow or the next day. No, I'm doing it right now. Right. Even though right. I'm not doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> right, right, right. And then, and then, so. And then, so especially in sales, like you have to build that momentum. Like if you take a break in sales, if you don't have a system or something, you're starting like, all over again. Right, you're starting to building that momentum all over again. And so, what really is hitting home to me these last few weeks, probably the last three, four weeks, is that I have done, and I have done so much work beforehand that now that like I had to take time off at the beginning of this month to like take care of personal stuff, and I was like, okay. Two weeks into February, now let's start working again, you know, and I was worried about like having to start over, but because I have, I have Townly and people can set schedules with me and I've done the work three weeks ago that people are following up with me and, you know, the, the seeds that I had planted are growing and they're reaching back out to me. And that's, that's so, it, it can be challenging to do, but when you get through it, it's so rewarding because A, you don't have to start over again. You got people there ready to work with you. And then you got people asking for you to do your business. So it's not like you have to start all by yourself all over again, execute that self-discipline. You can piggyback off of that stuff you started three, four or five months ago, whatever. Right. So and it's it, like and that, that, goes that with, momentum I, in the beginning is so important. But not just the momentum, but you have to be, you have to have the consistency with it. So, yeah. and, and, and that's what I learned in sales was it's not just the, the, the work that you put in each and every day, but what kind of work are you putting in? Yeah, what what kind of, how efficient are you, are you being in that hour or that three hours or that two hours or whatever it is, how efficient are you being in that, in that time? Not only that, but each and every day, you just focus on one thing, mm -hmm. building a brick. You just build that brick that one day. You have a task where you have a, 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 at most three tasks. Shouldn't give yourself more than three major tasks that you need to do each and every day. And then you just build, just focus on building that break. And the next day you do it again. Next day you do it again. Next day you do it again. Oh, you need a day off? No problem. Take that day off. But that, that day off, after that, you do it again. You go back and build the break. After a quarter, after a half a year, after 12 months, you look back and next thing you know, you got a house. Yeah. You don't have right. to, you don't have to keep building those bricks for that house. You can start building the guest house or you can start building the next level or the, the expansion or, or build a basement, whatever, you know, you just, you already have the house at that point is that's when you're working on referrals. That's when you're working on word of mouth or you just your what, what whatever content that you created before and it's still going. That's a brick. I'm hearing some static. Is there something around a microphone? It's like it's I hear you clearly and then I don't know if it's when you go far away or come back, but there's like what about now. Yeah, so there's like ongoing static right there now when you're now it's gone. Oh, you're probably yeah. just hearing my kids in the background. No, no, I hear your kids fine, but okay. Oh. I didn't know if there was like something happening. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Let me turn down the volume, maybe it's reverb. How about now? Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll go with that. It's it's just sound like this like, like this. It's like a staticky interference. Like it, there's nothing there now, but I think it has something to do with like where you your proximity to it. Because as you speak, I can hear it. Like yeah, it's not there now. Maybe it's just from the volume. <laughs> oh, okay. Technology. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Reverb off the speaker that's right next to the mic. Yeah. Yeah, man. So that's really cool though. And in, in discipline, like being aware of discipline is something that I'm going through right now because it's like, and it, it, it's all in my life. It's not just like doing the revenue, you know, in, you know, income producing activities, but it's even like with my food and it's like, 
you know, do I want to eat this right before bed? Is this helping me get towards my fitness goals? Is this, right. I saw something uh, the other day. It's like di- self-discipline is the control over immediate satisfaction or something like that. Like you have to control, you have to decide that I don't want this immediate satisfaction because of this long-term goal that I have. Um, and, yeah, I heard that the other day as well. I think it was, it was Gary Vee that did it. I don't know. I, was, I watch a lot of stuff that has to do with um, like coaching and, and motivation and just the, the mindset perception type of thing because even though I may hear it, um, but my clients may not hear it or yeah. just general people that follow my Facebook or my TikTok or whatever or my Instagram, I just make sure that this information just gets out there whether you see it or not, whether you read it or not, watch it, listen to it, or whatever, I want to make sure it's out there just so that people can, for me, it was, it was a handful of quotes, it was a handful of ideas, um, mostly inspired by like Tom Ferry and Robert Kiyosaki and um, Elon, and a lot of a lot of keynote speakers and Gary Vee, and they, um, it was a handful of those, those, those sayings or perspectives that really was like, okay, yeah, I don't need to worry about that, or I, or, or I just need to keep going because eventually something's going to change. Um, because I'm doing something different every day, I'm not expecting the same result. So, it, me putting that same information out there, even if it's not coming from me, I feel like it will better someone's life along the way. And that's the main goal of my vision. And now that I understand the difference between a goal and a vision, there is no timestamp on a vision. Yeah. There yeah, you're, no you're absolutely right too, because when you put that pressure on accomplishing a goal versus a vision, it's like, you know, you got the, you got the time restraints, you got the added pressure of whatever you want, you know, like if you're really wanting that goal, you know, you're going to be working hard for it. But then like you get, you get caught up in the, oh, I'll be happy when I accomplish this. Yeah. You know, like yep. that's the hardest thing, especially when like you're with people who care, like Nicole and I, like we both want our goals really, really bad. Like now, like yesterday, we're so tired of working hard, you know what I mean? Like so tired of starting over and working hard and be like, bro, like, can I get a break? And we're, and I'm 32, she just turned 35. And like, we still have a lifetime ahead of us of life and work and, and goals, you know what I mean? And we're yeah. like, we're like, okay, so we gotta, we gotta design our life a certain kind of way. And we gotta be, so we can have that work-life balance and, and do what we live this life that we wanna live. And then also, enjoy today between the between the bills between the challenges between the see that's why but that's exactly what um what i noticed that there is no work life balance it just is what it is you set yourself parameters and die and 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 will nots and will do and you just stick with it if if you're not going to take a call after 11 o'clock p.m then don't take a call after 11 o'clock p.m if you're not going to oh, take yeah. a call after five o'clock PM, don't take a call after five o'clock PM. Have an automated, have, there's a, there's a hundreds of free automations out there. You can set it up to say, Oh, I got a call after 5 PM. It's going to go straight to voicemail. And that voice was going to say, Hey, make an appointment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and the whole, I'm not going to be happy until this is done with that. You know that we all we all have to get out of that. You know, um, we have to we have like you said be more self self aware. I'm going through that too. Is is being more self aware outside of just um, just finances or just that revenue income type of type of, of approach. It's it's literally, hey, did I drink enough water today, or or or, or did I did I call my parents? I put on my schedule to call my parents. Did I put my? Did I call my schedule? Did I call call my parents? You know, it's that self awareness of where we can improve ourselves to improve everything around us. Right. And I'm, I'm a firm believer in manifestation. I'm a firm believer in using that that frequency and and that what that energy that you put out, you're going to get right back. So if you consistently tell yourself these affirmations and consistently focus deliberately 
on these steps one step at a time that you came up with because you saw the end goal and then you worked yourself backwards mm. no i can't do that until i do this because i want to do this but if i don't do it then i can't do that so i'm going to do this but and then having the self-discipline to execute um but that's an, that's an everyday battle because of our indoctrination as 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 country as a, as a, as a globe uh, it is a challenge for anybody listening like it is a challenge it's just it's like working out you know like even if the lightest of weights and you're working on technique work or running or stepping upstairs squats in the house whatever it is it's pick something that's a little like that's challenging that takes work every time that you do it that's what this is like and with the manifestations and like the whole acting now and what you're thinking and doing now is the is creating your external environment with with your thoughts and 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 water being able to hold memory like when it yes. freezes like it you know it look it up it has different shapes whether it's depending on the types of words you say to it and when your body your body is 70 ish percent water so yes. if we affect the water with our thoughts and this hate our uh, brain and heart co coherence it is, we are like talking about some woo woo stuff for most of the world right now. Yeah, the new age, <laughs> what they call it, new age stuff, but that new age stuff is just ancient knowledge. It is. That's all it is. And that ancient knowledge is now becoming a more of a flourish type of thing, uh, especially, you know, in the past year or so, and more and more people are starting to see and feel the power that we have as human beings um and the power of our minds and hearts and if it works together aka i'm i yes i know i have to do this but i don't want to do it I, it's not my passion it's not i don't feel anything i don't believe in it it'll never happen yeah even your mind is focused on it but your heart isn't or your heart's focused on it and your mind's not it's just never going to happen your heart and your mind have to be one you have to be doing exactly what you want to do how you want to do it so that you're happy with yourself. Be and if you, th if you think about any, any other position that you've been in where you're, that, that's, that's not this, that's, that's how people are unhappy with their jobs and disgruntled and have attitudes or think that other people are being a certain kind of way then because of whether or not it's projection, but it's because you're, it's, I'm speaking from my own experience and growing up in the household that I did the upbringing that I did around the people that I was around, even out of the household, you know, going into the military, being around those types of people, that type of control, that lifestyle, even though it was something, it was a goal that I was working towards. Okay. 16 weeks to become a Navy diver. Now I'm a Navy diver. What's my life like work? What's my work life now? And then I'm like, okay, this isn't what I want to be doing with my life. Like, this is how I want to be living my life. This is how I want to be living my day. It turns out that I'm doing a lot of other stuff that I don't really want to do more than the stuff that I want to be doing. And then no matter what that is, whether you're a garbage man or some of the elitist of the elite, if you're feeling that way, it all stacks up against you. And then you're going to, you're going to become frustrated. You're going to become bitter. You're going to look at people differently because you're in an environment that you're creating from within based off the choices that you made yesterday. And now you may or may not be happy with those decisions. Right. And now it's time to change again. So it's like. And, and, and it's crazy. It really is crazy because all that is true. Like every last bit of it is true. Like if you're looking at the cap, cup half full, you'll look at the cup half full. You'll be optimistic. If you look at it half empty, then you're going to be pessimistic. You're just going to look at everything half empty. And even though you, if, if something bad may happen, there is a good way of looking at it. You can look at the guy next to you with no legs. Mm. You look at the guy, the girl next to her who just lost her mom. You know? That's so that's so funny. Like, cause I I think I think I think putting things in a perspective is really important for people to stay compassionate and grateful. And then it's it's interesting to meet people who, <clears throat> like uh, my ex, I would try to console. And be like, hey, you know, at least at least we got a roof, you know, like for example, a roof over our heads, or you know, we we all still got our 
phalanges, you know, we still got all of our digits and our, and everything, you know, especially like uh, when I was on Guantanamo Bay, they would have the disabled vets come down to do like diving, scuba diving and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And like, look at what these people are, how they're living and how their mindset is. And you're over here talking about how this didn't happen for you. And it's like, hey, well, let's think about this. What drives, what's really interesting are the people who are like, well, that doesn't mean we get to discredit how I'm feeling about this situation. That's a challenge when you, so it's like, well, at least we got a roof over our head. Yeah, but I still feel this way. Okay, well, let's dig into that. Why are you feeling that way? What can we do to fix that? Right. You know what I mean? Like, what- <laughs> like, like the way I look, the way I see it is like, especially in situations like that, it's like, okay, well, at least you got a roof over your head. Oh, oh well, I don't know how long I'm going to have a roof over my head. Okay, well, that's a good question to ask yourself. Instead of looking at it, oh, I don't know, figure it out. Stop using that same energy to be negative, to, to put that same energy to be positive and actually come above what's happening. Hmm. Because if you don't, you're, you're going you're gonna to sink. And this is where it's not, you gotta, if you, if it's, and especially if it's out of your control, it's out of your control. You can't change it anyway. You gotta bite your lip. You right. Bite your lip. That's what it's like to be like a year in the military and realize that you have five years left and you can't do anything. <laughs> you feel like, oh man, what am I gonna do? You know. And so, but yeah. It's good to have all this mindset and the philosophy in place for whatever you're doing. And then what's great about this is like if you're if you're listening and you don't have the environment or the support or the people, the community around you that can help you level up and think like minded and, and provide you what you're looking for as a mentor or community, you can create your own and you can find people out there and they can be your strength. They can be your wall to lean on in your in your times of need when you're like when you don't have that support of spouse and they don't see your vision and you're working hard for your family and you got you got resistance all around you, you need to tap into people who are leaders, who have the beliefs that you have, who have the same vision as you do, so you don't get derailed by someone who's not involved or unsupportive, you know? And it's like, that's one of the biggest things that I've seen in, in, uh, in like real estate network marketing is that when you don't have that supportive spouse, or the family on board, it adds so much stress to your mm-hmm. to your plate, and mm-hmm. now you're now you're fighting your own challenges, and then the external challenges from other people. So, in order for you to complete and follow through with your vision, your dreams, you gotta ha- tap into those people who say, "No, bro, you're not crazy. This is reality." This is still what you're and honestly, for. that's why that's why we do what we do, Robert. That's exactly why we why we do what we do. We didn't have that. We nope. didn't have that. We just had to we just had to grind it out. We had to grind it out, figure it out, make our mistakes, and 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 those learning lessons, and then keep pushing forward. And then now we have created that network for us. We have people that we can reach out and mentors and other business associates that do the same thing that we do, so that we can lean on each other and say, "Hey, you know, you know, you got this. No, what you're what you're doing, what you're putting out there is gold. You need to you need to keep doing it. Matter of fact, I need you to come on my podcast next week." So that we can do this again, <laughs> type of thing. You know that yeah. we, we we have built that community of other mentors and coaches and and people that and we want people that want to put out the knowledge and the power and the choice, which is freedom. Yes. To make the change in the mindset shift and and the the change the habits that run our life. 90% of our day is subconscious. Yeah. Only 10% of our of our of our actions, our our movements, our thoughts are are conscious efforts. Unless you specifically are self-aware on what you're doing and what you're saying and what you're seeing. Because if you don't, 90% of your first 7 years of your life is automatic. Whatever you were taught, whatever you saw, whatever you've been doing since eight from infancy coming out of your mom to going to, to turning eight, that span is where that automatic drive comes from. So even so if you're an adult listening to this and you want to change that mindset and you wanna and you wanna do better and, and wake up every morning feeling a, feeling like you wanna get up, 
you have to change how you see the world. You have to change that, that automatic subconscious movement and thought process that you automatically have by just being self-aware of what you're thinking, what you're doing, what you just spent the last hour doing. And then you say, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. Like, I can't afford that. Stop saying that. How can I afford that? Exactly. And this is applicable whether you're an entrepreneur, parent, or or, or an employee. Or, but this is something yeah. that everybody needs to. This is something that we all have to pretty much teach our children, so we don't have to. We we, we should be teaching children instead of repairing broken adults. You yeah. Know? And like. So, Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> teach the children so we don't have to repair broken adults. Yes. And so, and this is something that, like so I'm a. I, you know, I've been going through some nasty, like almost pr pretty much parental alienation, and I'm like still in the middle of it, so I can't go into too much detail. But in regards to what I'm seeing in the in the parenting space and the alienated fathers, that we need we need to we need to do exactly what we're talking about and adjust the philosophy, even as fathers, because a lot of people have the what's the point perspective in life or some type of family issue and mm -hmm. when we're talking about how important the years of zero to eight are for a child whether you're a mother or a father or an influencer in a child's life you need to be that that light or that mentor or that person that cares enough about you know the child yourself the world in order to have a better impact on them and i mean the the reason why we're seeing so much of the knowledge industry coming out with the information on philosophy and, and community and, and achieving a life of your dreams, whatever that is, is because of all the stuff that generations have been pushed aside, you know, put your feelings in a box, work hard, don't talk back to me. Parents that don't have control of themselves trying to control their kids just because they said so, because I'm your dad, because I'm your mom and I have a Do as I say, and, not as I do. Right, right, like, you know, so the, the, the understanding of yourself and what your needs and your desires are and having the right philosophy with the action plan is going to give you everything that you need, whatever it is that you're looking for. Yes. And, that, and, that, and that's applicable for positive and negative. Things. Everything. So, so you need to be aware of what your ethics are in the terms of values because, I mean, Charles Manson, I, I've been getting into these Netflix shows. My girl, she loves true crime. So we're, I listened to some of it and, you know, like to have a leader, like someone like you and I out in front of a community talking about, you know, having a philosophy and, and follow your dreams and manifestation, like you can take that either the good way, you can either go to the light or the dark, you know, so you need to have that moral compass and, and be aware of yourself and what you're wanting and whether or not that's going to direct you in a good or bad path. Who am I around? Am I finding myself around people who are moving forward or backward in their life? Are my friends getting arrested? Are my friends making big right. checks? And what I've noticed is, um, I'm I'm just you know shooting in the wind here. You weren't um, a traditional school learning person, were you? You didn't do homework, did you? No, no, I wasn't a bad. yeah, yeah. I'm more project based for sure. There you go. That's what I'm saying. I did. I didn't do papers, projects, homework from fifth grade all the way to eleventh grade. Skimmed by, ace, twi uh, quizzes, tests, and classroom participation. Mm -hmm. And I did medicine for thirteen years after that. <laughs> wow. So it's it's like I was a corpsman. I was an FMF corpsman. Okay. And before that, I was um, a sports medicine, sports medicine athletic trainer, medical assistant, paramedic. Cool. And, you know, I did I did medicine. That's what I, I, it was, it came easy, but I was a terrible student. Like I learned it, but I wasn't doing the extra stuff that I didn't think I needed to do. And the way the system is now, it's a hundred times worse. So oh, wow. yeah, it, the way the system now is a hundred times worse because you have people like us who just aren't built for that cookie cut learning system we we want to be hands-on or we want to be audio learned or we want to be visual learned or, or or maybe we want a textbook i don't know but at the same time the way learning is today 
is not the way learning was a hundred years ago when they haven't changed the system at all. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're still in the industrial age. Type right. Of and we are not in the industrial age. We actually are past the mass information age. We're, we're done with that. The information age is gone. The information wow. age is gone. The reason why I say it's gone because it's here. You go on Google and look up everything and anything that you ever wanted. You don't need a degree. You don't need to pay for school and you don't need to pay for the knowledge that we give people all the time. But the reason why we charge people for the things that we do, as far as giving people that guidance and that and that and that mentorship and 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 teaching them how to use stocks and bonds and real estate and crypto and investments in general or assets and liabilities, you know why we charge people to do that is because when they can get the same information on YouTube, is because they don't want to filter out all the bullshit that's out there the stuff that doesn't work the 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 whole guru, the gurus out there that want to you want you to pay twenty five thousand dollars for a, a six months of or i'm sorry five days of school and and say have a nice day what are you going to do with five days of school and you just spent twenty five thousand dollars on some mogul telling you the same stuff that you heard him say on youtube yeah man so well sometimes you know so now that's, but, you gotta, but the yeah, thing you gotta is, be careful. Yeah, but the thing is, like it, you do have to be careful on, on all that stuff. But what you want to look for when you're trying to learn this information is is the person is the person actually telling you the concept behind it, walking you through it hand by hand, giving you a, a way to access them so you, you can ask questions directly but the reason why we can charge for that and even though all the information is out there is because we've already filtered it out we are we, we took the big picture took the meat potatoes out and put that in one spot and took the vegetables and just surrounded the meat and potatoes with the vegetables <laughs> because you need the vegetables to make all of it make sense right. and see things coming before the curve is here yeah you know, I've spent I've spent a lot of money on training and courses online yeah, and in person and workshops, and I I wouldn't I don't regret any of it. Me I've either. Def, I've definitely learned. I've learned not only have I focused on marketing and sales funnels and all that kind of stuff, but going through that stuff, you learn more than just your topic. You know, what I mean, like you're yourself. You're, you're learning yourself absolutely. For me, I I started realizing that all the marketing strategies were the same, the time constraints, the limitations, you know, the, I saw the funnels, the upsells, Ex you know exclusivity. I mean? <laughs> yeah, all of it. And then so like, as I started getting, uh, as my expertise started increasing with the marketing side and, and creating like workshops and masterminds and building sales funnels, they teach you, it, it, you learn that people have an attachment to their dollar and they will overlook something that they got for free, but because they give more, they have more attached to the dollar, they actually learn and retain what they paid for. So like you're saying, like Jim Rohn and Tony Robbins, they, Jim Rohn did and Tony Robbins does, he talks about everything that he does on YouTube, on the podcast, on yeah. other people's stuff. And then when you go to the workshops, that's like an immersion experience where like you see it firsthand. He, he puts the concepts into practice with people right, right in front of you. And then you're around a community who is open-minded in that community. You feel the energy and the vibration of everybody around you. So you, it really makes an imprint on, on what you're doing. And, th and that's what's crazy because people, when you're new in business, or if you're one of the people who are trying to protect others, like, oh, you're just trying to take money from, you know, alienated dads, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like, well, hold on a second. I've been going through this experience for about five years. This is what I've put together to make your life easier. You can either do it your way or you can pay five bucks for this or whatever, you know. Right. And then <clears throat> save yourself the same heartache that I went through. <laughs> exactly exactly how much is it worth to you and then and, and when you start doing uh for those consultants out there when you start doing project-based pricing depending on whatever you're doing you need to identify how much it would be worth to your client to to pay for this because if you're trying to boost their business 
so they can make a million dollars in the next year. You know, how much work does that require for you as a consultant? And right. how much do you deserve of that one million dollars because of the percentage? If I come in here with experience and resources to help you grow over a million dollars in revenue, I'm entitled to a percentage of that because of all the years and experience that I've had to do to get to this point. Otherwise, you can do it yourself. When I first started in, in business, I had more time than money. So I yeah. learned a lot of skills to do it myself. And, I, and, and, and as far as progress grows, my, intel, my intellect progress grew substantially. And then where I wanted to be as a brand and business, it was just like a little bit because I'm up until two o'clock in the morning making my own email campaigns and editing this and researching other people, you know, and it's mm -hmm. just, so when you've got someone who says, Hey, here's a package, you can either pay for it here or here at this price. It's really up to you. And that was a long tangent of pretty much just saying this mouse right here, this mouse, you could probably buy this for a dollar or you could probably make it yourself for 75 cents. But guess what? You got to buy the parts. You got to learn how to put it together. You can either buy it from from Joe Frazier at the store for fifteen dollars and get it right now, or you can order it online and pay four dollars and get it next week. It all just depends on your terms and conditions, right. and that's what and that's what people do every single day. They negotiate with themselves. They sell themselves on something that they want, whether it's a cannoli or to get gas. Oh my God! You know, like, yes, yes. So that's a lot of people don't realize is that every aspect of industry is sales. Every aspect of industry is sales. I don't care. Like, for instance, I have a newsletter out, and it's 100% free right, as of right now. <laughs> but yeah. it's 100% free. People still don't do it. Like you said, uh, they still don't do it. But at the same time, when I start charging, because of the information that these people actually, like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll spend $5 a month or $10 a month or whatever it is. And... And, I, and and they actually use that information. Oh well, they just made a thousand dollars on that information because they actually executed, or 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 what have you. And 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 you really have to understand that every no that you get gets you closer to your loss. Right. So it does no, not matter what um what you're doing as long as you're happy with what you're doing, and you're putting it out there. You're giving it. You you letting it, allowing people to have access to it so that. You, so that they can grow themselves, and of course, eventually your band, your brand will pick up traction, and and that that um that consistency will just grow and grow and grow, and then you know you're a mobile. Right. Was like. Oh. But yeah, so absolutely, man. Like, um, so absolutely, like it, it's just it gets to the point where. If, if you if you're listening to this and you're a consultant or if you're listening to this and 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 you and you're trying to build your brand and your business then uh you want you want to just make sure that what you're doing you're happy with what you're doing um because it doesn't matter like gary v is one of the largest online speakers slash content creators slash valued keynote speakers out there right now and it took him 12 years to be seen he was on the net doing videos and and different things and v log of uh, video logs and all types of stuff for like 12 years of just doing the same thing he's doing now right he just did it because he loved what he was doing and right. now he can now and 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 his philosophy is exactly what you were mentioning earlier. Like these, these, these keynote speakers and these coaches and these consultants, they, they put a lot of their stuff for free out there on YouTube, exactly the same information. But when they do their masterminds and their keynotes and their, and their, and their packages, they put the concept in there, the example. And, 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 if the, and if the client doesn't understand it, they explain it in a different way, exactly the same concept in a different way so that they can understand it until they understand it. Right. That's the, and that's, and that's the huge difference between having a mentor and just out here by yourself for five, six years trying to put all the pieces together. And all, all of a sudden, ding, light bulb goes off. Now you understand it. Now you can execute. Now you can, now you can do the things and make the money and have the time and have the freedom and have the choice. But you just spent five or six years on it when you could have gotten to or purchased that package or that mouse at, at, at $4 and 
from the person that you best believe in or or follow so that you can truly understand it and then just you're not you're not trying to reinvent the wheel people have been doing this for five thousand years five thousand years the economy the economics has existed that we can remember that we have documentation for it's exactly the same as five thousand years ago yeah it's just different tools being used like financial instruments and stuff like that so and then we're in the middle of a shift again. Yeah. The shift is now like the, the, the debt system, like I said, the debt system is dead, right? And it, it's the, 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 the banking structure, the banking, the central banking system is, has to change. It has to, it has to, it has to shift or it's going to be obsolete. And with that being said, a lot of people are going to, get caught up in the shift like they're going to still have this stuff that doesn't exist anymore mm-hmm. they're going to have this stuff that 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 will implode there will be companies that will go completely out of business because the whole industry of that whole industry is no longer in existence anymore right so i feel like uh those of you that are are, are are trying to help people make that shift, because if you're in consulting or business or finance at all, you you undeniably know that the shift is here and, and that it's happening. So if you know the shift is here and it's happening and you know how to navigate through it, you need to help others do the same or else they'll be off or not. And, and like, there's always gonna, so, you know, there's always going to be change. It's, it's there's everything's going to be balanced. There's always going to be people like you and I who are making moves for the greater good, or or you know capitalist, whatever you want to say. There's going to be capitalism, and then there's going to be people. You know, people are going to be wanting to say like, hey, help me, but not want to do anything for it. You know, like the like the types of people that you read about who are becoming government dependent and stuff like that because mm-hmm. the system that's been in place. So it's like. Yeah, there will be a shift and people will, should and will have to pivot, but will everybody do it? No. Will everybody be open-minded to it? No. Will everybody want to grow and progress? No. But I look at it like it's balanced now because if I'm, anytime I kind of run into somebody that's less than the ideal person, you know, just like, you know, I'm like, I look at it like, okay, this was an experience. I wonder why I met this person. I wonder why this person came into my life. Yes. And then, and then also like it's called balance you know I, I just address everything as balance now you know what i mean no okay it's not towards me it's balance i'm gonna get this right yes there has to be yin to the yang that every 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 action has an opposite and reactory uh, you know what i'm saying so it's it with every for every piece of matter there's antimatter so there's there is there is <laughs> there, there there's more people don't understand that Yes, there is a bad side of things, but it's not necessarily bad. Yeah, right, right. When the, when right. 2008 hit, a lot of people became millionaires. Mm-hmm. When the stock market crashed in 29, a lot of people became millionaires. Right. It's Dynasties were born. Yeah. They saw opportunity in chaos. And then you have people that are seeing opportunity or not seeing opportunity when it's when when it's up, when when it's <laughs> when it's when it's flush. <laughs> but, and you, like you said, you're gonna have you're gonna have the people that are gonna take advantage of this shift. There's gonna be people that are gonna fall on this shift. But at the same time, it 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 it's it's a, it's, a, it's a reset. You know, it's it's more like a hey, you know, you have. It's never been such a difference between here and here. It's never been such a difference. Mm-hmm. So I believe that with this, it will be more like here. Okay. Like not necessarily closer together like this, but it's gonna be like this. It's gonna be, it's yeah. gonna be, you're gonna have more horizontals. You're gonna have more horizontals and 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 a few more verticals. And I think I, I I you know I support that. I support that thought because the people like you and I, we have learned how to leverage systems for our own personal success, but also the ability to give back more based on the, the, the structure. Now, now, for example, for example, uh, the companies that I'm with, I'm EXP Realty, 
legal shield. You know, these allow us to build teams and help you earn or become the better version of yourself as you still try to prosper, as you're still trying to be that caterpillar turning into a butterfly. You know what I mean? Like when you're trying to go through your transformation process, instead of, I feel more comfortable saying, hey, you know what? If you were to join my team, you'll get all of these resources instead of me saying, hey, let me sell you an e-course for 500 bucks. Hey, come to my mastermind. I'm still going to have e-courses and workshops and masterminds, but it is but more you're going to you're going to get every resource that I use. Right. I, right. And I'm, you're, and you're I'm gonna not going to talk about something that I here. don't use. I, it's more advantageous for you to join my team for $25 a month versus pay $500 to get some limited access. If you were to join right. my real estate team, guess what? You've got a mentor, you got experience, you got resources, you got someone to hold your hand and grow you as a real estate investor, real estate agent, you know, whatever sales yep. person you want to be. You want to get better at public speaking, you want to get better at money. A lot of companies offer a lot of resources. It's up to you to kind of learn about the resources they offer. I, I switched, I went to three different real estate brokerages. I went to three or four brokerages within three years. I started at Exit Realty, then I went to EXP Realty. I left and went to Realty One Group, and then I came back to EXP Realty. Now, I wouldn't have known what I had at EXP Realty unless I had been to those other places because I saw the resources were different. I saw the culture was different. I saw that the amount of money that I could make was different. And especially with what I was going through in my life, I needed resources and support. You know, especially when you're a new real estate agent, you need resources and support, not to mention when you're a new real estate agent starting a business and going through divorce and bouncing between Cuba and Virginia. You know, there's a lot of challenges there. So you don't know what you have until it's gone, whether it's a resource or a relationship, you know. So that's what I always try to share. That's why people like you and I are around to help new entrepreneurs or people looking for a transition being like, well, hold on a second. Let's do a holistic approach of what you're trying to accomplish here because right. this might be a good option for you, but for the complete package and the overall cost, this would be better. Even though you might not, oh, that's not for me or you know, that's for those kinds of people. No, no. If this is what you're trying to do it, most people are trying to get where they want to go as fast as possible for as cheap as possible. Now, you're either going to listen to somebody or you're going to learn the hard way. And that's yeah. why, and that's why people, you want to know, you want to know why people have an online brand, what your online brand, it's not just to let people know that, you know, you sell a service or a product. It's to let people know about who you are as a person and what your intentions are and building that community of success. And that could be within real estate. That could be within any industry. Yep. So yep. it doesn't matter what the industry is. It, it, it all, it all, it all is, based on the foundation of economics right regardless right. regardless you, 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 it, it, you, even non-profits are part of the economic system and they have no profit <laughs> oh dude they just know how to they just know how to structure a company and move their money around and that's they get it. titles to their money that's you know it. like and and that's and that's what i you know i'm in real estate i'm a you know we're both in real estate but like you know when you talk to people about what you do and they're like so what do you do you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, like, it's well, like I do a number of things. It all depends on what you're asking. <laughs> like I'm looking up other people on Google. I'm like, what are these people saying? You know, like obviously like uh, the guy from Shark Tank, you know, Mark Cuban. I looked up Darren mm-hmm. Hardy. I'm like, these, these guys, you Google them at this point in their life and their career, they're considered American entrepreneurs. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I tell people. I say, I'm just, I'm just a, 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 a business coach and an entrepreneur. Yeah. Never and just. They're, they're like, you're not just. You are valuable. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just is a curse word. You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what I mean. Like, listen, I've I've learned how to leverage real estate to stay off the streets. I've learned how to leverage, yeah. leverage real estate to earn extra money. You know what I mean. Like these are the, these are the systems that we're all born into, and we need to learn how to play the game that we're born into. You know? Yes, it's well, all I'm, around us. It's everywhere. It's literally everywhere, and just people are just going about their day using it as consumers instead of capitalists <laughs> right, right right and, and what i always like to say because there's there are those people who are like oh you know they make too much money or that's for the rich or you know they have this stigma about people who have money now if you as you learn about business and tax write-offs and your company structure and donations and stuff like that 
The idea behind capitalism is for you to provide a product or service for a profit to earn a living for yourself while giving back to the community to help the growth, help stimulate the growth of back the community. To the community by right. giving back. It's not all about making the Benjamins and saying screw you to other people. Yes, that does happen. We've seen it happen in all kinds of ways. But as we were talking about balance and the good and the bad, when you connect with the right people, there's all kinds of great stuff happening around the world right now. And they people are taking the money. They're putting clothes on their back and they're giving it, giving it back. To the they're community. getting back to work. That's it. Right. Exactly. So we just covered a lot. Wow. I love. We did. Not, we not, did. not only do I feel, not only have I been thinking that like that saying treat others as uh, treat others how you want to be treated or treat other people like they're yourself you know i i literally been trying to approach that more as like okay this person is an extension of me and i'm going to treat him and compassionately just as if i want to be treated but also like know and respect that this person has a different life than i do where is this person coming from mm -hmm. you know so like as we do that it's really exciting to connect with people who I legitimately feel like are further extensions. You and I have only talked a few times, you know, like yeah. we're in the same organization. I followed up with you. I want to make sure that you're successful. And now it turns out that we have a lot in common, you know, like <laughs> it turns out that we have a lot in common, our philosophies and our goals and how we're going to work together. So this is really exciting. And as you and I get more familiar uh, with each other, what, what would you tell people listening to this podcast? Like what is, what is it that you do or what's your main focus? as your as a consultant like how do you approach your business um i approach my business of are you happy are you happy with what you're doing do you wake up every morning wanting to start your day no why not let's get down to the bottom of it and see if we can help because it, most of the time it's either a perception lost or just don't know what your next step is right nine times out of ten those three are the those three reasons are the reason why you don't feel like you're in a place where you want where you should be and and having that attitude of you know not feeling like you're in a place where you should be is i know it sounds harsh but it's a personal problem right it is it is an internal problem that is influenced by your surroundings and what you ex and what you are willing to accept as a reality instead of what you feel like should be your reality. And, right. and that's, a, that's, that's what I lean heavily on is helping people be okay with themselves and their truth. And then, and then figure out what they like to do as their passion and then monetize it. Right. Right. And then monetize it. There's, there's, there's thousands of ways of monetizing anything and everything, especially now that the internet is what it is. And now we got internet 3.0 coming through. It's not even a game anymore. So it's, it's just doing it. Just it's just do doing it. it. It's just doing <laughs> it's it. It's literally so, just doing it. That's it. So I just put, I just put my, my, my big focus is just putting the information out there that, that the information is available. The resources are available. The mentorship is there. Um, we have a team, we have, we were, we're bringing on more consult consultants every day on different industries across the world. Um, so if you need an advisement on music, I got an advisor on music. If you need an advisement on real estate, I got an advisement on real estate. And, and anything and everything, um, if I don't have it, we'll find it. But yeah. at the same time is I just want people to grow. I want people to be, like I said earlier, I, knowledge is power. You have to have the knowledge to have the power to execute. Power is choice. To having the choice to do something or not do something or do this or do that is to have the power of the, over your own life. I like that. And, and to having the choice is freedom. True freedom is having the choice to do this or do that instead of having to do this because I have to do that. Right. So I want people to be free. Therefore, I have to give them the choice and they don't have the choice without the power and with, without the power, you, with, without the knowledge, you can't have the power. So <laughs> I just want, I just want that to be my legacy and, and, and what I leave behind. Sounds like you're a thought leader, bro. Sounds like the definition of a thought leader. O-U-G-H-T. <laughs> Not to be confused with a pimp, but... <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah a thought a thought leader for sure and that, that's that's my whole thing too you know like i've i have this uh every once in a while or definitely for the last few years i've been battling this like you know that question what do you do you know because as i make marketing materials as i push out content i need to be answering the questions of my target audience you know so i really want to be portrayed accurately to better serve them but this and this image of myself and like whether it's from growing up or being around the in you know in, in new england like what is it that you do you know are you a hard worker are you blue collar you know like the, the right. people that you're around and and how they view things it's made me question like well, do i have too many things happening what is right. it that i do like you know right. but but and, and how do you how do you niche down what you just said you know people pe when people say hey harrison I need some, I need some help trying to figure out what to do for work or something like that. And then you start talking about like, you know, the necessary oh, things to figure oh, out that's the easy. philosophy. No, that's easy. No, that's really easy. You just simply ask their, answer their question in the simplest form possible. So if you say, Hey, Harrison, uh, what do you do? Or, 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 or a better question. Hey, Harrison, I have this, I, have, I see that you're sharing things on Facebook on stocks and, and crypto. I want to get involved. How can I get involved and how can you help me? Mm. Not a problem. Make an appointment. <laughs> yeah. Not a problem. Make an appointment. Not a problem. Make an appointment. 15 minutes of free. And from yeah. that 15 minutes, which may go over depending on the schedule, right? Within 15 minutes, you will know where you need to go. I will know how I can help you. And then you just have a decision to make. Right. Right. And that, and I, and I leave it like that. I, I carry it like I do, like I did uh, life insurance. Okay. I had to, it, it, life insurance is like selling nothing else in the world. It's like selling life insurance is like trying to sell a bond. Okay. Right. It's like it, selling life insurance because everybody knows they need it. Why does 86% of people not have it? Mm. And then the, and then the 75 of the 86% won't buy it. Mm. No, it's too expensive. Oh, I can get you a term policy for $13 a month. It's not too expensive. Mm. And then down the road, we'll shift it into whatever you need to when you're in a better place type of thing. But it gets to the point where they're just not getting it and you got to be rude. Yeah. Okay. Tactfully rude. Right. Yeah. So you see, you want to say, okay, well, I gave you the information. I answered the question. You can either make an appointment or you can kick rocks. Yeah. And because, I, and, and, and I, I hate to say it that way, but you know, with, with everything, especially today's day being politically correct, Oh, you can't say that you're going to hurt my feelings. Well, then you don't need to do this anyway. Yeah. 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 You need to go back to your job, work your nine to five, put it into a 401k, let somebody else manage your money and retire on a lower living expense than you were before. All right. And then start over again. When and then start all over again when you're 72 <laughs> because yeah. the market crashed or something. Now your 401k is shit. Yeah. I think so, I, I I think because well because I've I've started in real estate as a real estate agent and then being around other realtors who are like one thing focus on one thing I'm a realtor and now I I prefer to teach people like you're saying I like to teach people the pursuit of happiness and how to obtain it usually using leveraging multiple systems sources of, of income right right so I don't I don't I'm gonna be honest with the world right now I don't love talking about interest rates okay i don't love talking about the differences between a va home loan and a conventional and fha okay? right like, like listen the real estate market between virginia beach and connecticut is totally different i oh, started yeah. virginia beach a lot of sub you know a lot of subdivisions and houses and there's some waterways there's some good looking real estate but connecticut man there is historic victorian castles you know, there's like multifamilies. You're looking at a minimum of 500K a house. Dude, so not only does the real estate, the terrain and everything change, and it's more interesting to me. I like to talk about the hassles, the, the houses. I can appreciate a beautiful house. I can appreciate the amount of work that we have to do. I can look out for my buyer's best interest saying, hey, these are water stains all over there. Keep an eye out. But do I want to pay $1,000 a month in ads to find cold leads that want to buy or sell a house just to fuel my business? No, I just I want to work with real estate investors or people who are interested in leveraging ownership of real estate so we can make more money in multiple ways and have a legitimate relationship yes. versus 
hey, I'm real estate Robert. How can I help you buy or sell a house today? Who do you know that wants to buy or sell a house? You know, no, I, let's, I, I let's want, I want best. <laughs> let's flip. Let's B R R R. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I don't have to worry about the numbers. I, you know, I mean, think about how, think about burning out, you know, like, because one person moves, you know, a family can move every five to seven years. So how many people are ready to buy or sell a house right now? And then how long will it be before they have to move again? You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, if you can get a group of, if, no matter what business you're in, building a team that are, are working in the same direction, it's just going to make life so much better. And then you don't have to worry about where you're going to get next week's check because you already know that you've got a team that you're working with and you're uh, and they're just as each other. on to, to get things done as you are. And, right. and, and that's, and that's, and that's, that's entrepreneurship 101. You want to be a subject matter expert on what your niche is and then outsource the rest of it. Right. Right. Outsource. Yeah. You're going to take a hit. Four you're going to take a hit by not doing it yourself. You're going to take a hit, but you can focus more on what your concept is and what you, what, how you bring in money that, mm -hmm. That money that's going out to your outsourcing, your CPA, your bookkeeper, your lawyer, your your marketer, your your financial um, officer, whatever you wanted to outsource, because you are let's say you're the creator. All you do is create. All you do is create. You don't know how to run a business. You don't know how to do this. You don't <laughs> know how to do that. You don't know how to do this. You don't know how to do that. Well, guess what? You got five people you need to hire, yeah. or five people you need to bring under contract under equitable equitable shares or whatever. You don't have money. You can bring people on board. Just give them something. Right. Right. And they will work with you, not for you. And that's what you want. Right. Right. Do what you love. Delegate the rest. You know, I love the four hour work week. dude. like this oh, guy yeah. just learned. This guy has. If you never heard of the book, four hour work week It's by Tim Ferriss. Right. And um, yep. Yep. Th this guy isn't lazy. He is resourceful in trying to identify what types of businesses he can use to, to work as little hours as possible. And then this guy talks about virtual assistants, building websites, you know, selling a product, how to automate everything. And you can do the same thing with whatever your interest is, even if you're a painter or a carpenter. There's ways that you can do similar stuff. Okay. Um, so highly recommend it. So yeah, I think it's really important that we as thought leaders and coaches and people who have gone to the distance to find the resources to, to leverage for a life of, you know, comfort is it's really important to give back to the community and help them grow like that. Absolutely. Um, and that's what we're here for, man. That's what we're here for. And I, and I like that. I first time I ever heard of a thought leader. I like it. Oh, really? It, it, it's new to me too. I heard I, I, it's, you know, we're using it in the company and then there's a local, uh, um, there's like a local work uh, workplace company near near me. They do they're called Thought Leadership LLC or something like that. And what they do is they come into the workplaces and they train about like racial equality in the workplace. So they're they're called Thought Leaders LLC. They're in around the Hartford area. Um, hmm. But I, I really like the Thought Leader because it all starts with our thoughts. Everything starts from our thoughts. So I got a few. Man. So uh, I got a few questions to ask you here, and then we can wrap it up, brother. Um, if you look back on the last 12 months in your business, what were the biggest needle movers? The biggest what? What, what are the biggest needle movers if you look back on the last 12 months of your business? What made the most jumps? Uh, you can also think about what made the biggest impact on your business finances and life. Well, the way I the way I see like the needle moving, um, I th I think that I think now that that phrase thought leader is really resonating really heavy right now because it wasn't it wasn't necessarily something that happened with my business. It's something that happened with life. So when you're put into a corner, your fight or flight kicks in, and that really will drive you to either sink or swim. And I was, I was, I was refusing to sink. So what happened was I was like, well, I need to, I need to start my new business. I need to 
I need to start getting people out there. I need to let people know what I'm capable of by with proof of data. And then I just did it. Like I, I, I said, oh, I'm tired, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay up until two o'clock in the morning and knock this out because I want this out to be, I want this to be posted tomorrow morning so that everybody that wakes up in the morning sees it on their feed on every social media platform. And I want, I want to start a newsletter. I, I, I just said, okay, I'm going to do it. And you just make that conscious decision to, to do the steps that you have already thought, brainstormed, business plan, wrote down, put on sticky notes on a mirror, whatever you do to make sure that you stay motivated in whatever you're doing. I stopped, I stopped putting the things that need to be done on those sticky notes and just did them. Mm. Yeah. Um, that was the biggest needle mover that I've ever done. I, I did it with my last business, but that was just me testing the waters of business. Never been in business before, never really did business in general. I was like, listen, I know the concept. Let's see if I can knock it out. And I was just, just happy to be really good at it. Um, but doing it this way with Harrison Gray Consulting was just a whole nother, whole nother monster because I wasn't just working with real estate and trying to form deals and get investors and title companies and buyers and sellers and all that stuff. I was, I'm trying to work the hearts and minds of people who are hurting. Yeah. Right on, man. I think that's a solid answer. So with, with that being said, because you're doing, because you're a do it now kind of guy and then the, the other stuff were on sticky notes, what small or what small daily or weekly habits are you doing to have to add to your business personal financial success? So um, I, I recently read a book called Miracle Morning, right? Um, it's highly recommended um, with getting your day started, which will put you in the mindset and routine of getting your day right. Um, and then that in turn gives you a good week, good quarter, good year, um, good life, right? Um, so I started doing the Miracle Morning Routine. Um, definitely, like I said, highly suggest reading that book and building your own morning Miracle Morning Routine. That changed my whole thing. Um, I was doing it in the military, but you know, since I went into the civilian side, I didn't have the structure or anything like that to really stick with it. So I just said, okay, I have to have the self-discipline to stick with it and get back into it. And then um, that, and I, and, and what I started writing on my sticky notes and, and my notes on a daily day basis are the the little things throughout the day that um, that build into that that, that self confidence and self awareness of all right, I made my bed this morning. Awesome. Well, let's keep it going. Oh, I yeah. made I, I made the call that I needed to make to uh, a new client or a follow up or or I I wrote up the next newsletter or I started writing the newsletter and then check those boxes write those little boxes in there and check them off because they they build up to those bigger boxes those bigger tasks and then you knock out those bigger tasks like oh well now i can take over the world yeah absolutely it starts so those check little things time. that i started implementing just started building up and started and then like i said those bricks today i'm looking back now and like now i have i have on half a wall so far <laughs> so i want to keep on doing that and then so, I'm, so that consistency is is what i really amped up is to be more consistent on a day-to-day -day basis yeah and it's just in your goal's best interest to be as consistent as possible you know like you're either slowly building things up or slowly tearing them down so and and and, and even waking up like you know when i was in the military i used to wake up very last minute and then just go to work you know waking up very last minute and going to work now on my own it's if i were to keep doing that it's, it'd be a different approach it, it's still like i don't want to do it or it's last minute i'm not prepared when you're when you're a kid excited to wake up for christmas you can hardly go to sleep and then you wake up excited and you're ready to open up the presents yes. like that's how that's how you need to be in, a, in checking the check boxes like okay this is one more that i get to do this is one more thing that i get to do when you're when you're you know you're not when you're not priming yourself in the morning when you're just going to do stuff like a zombie you're gonna feel and see different results versus when you're living intentional with excitement knowing that you're working towards your goal so i like what you said there i need yeah. i put this over my my head because i'm starting to get cold but i keep looking like a rasta i think i'm just like <laughs> i feel like i got a huge dread underneath the hat <laughs> but, um so all right so we talked about what's working 
what are what are bi the biggest mistakes you've made in the last year that you could warn others not to do so they can avoid those same mistakes? Um, there's a there's a there's a there's a couple of them. Um, uh, don't sell yourself short. Um, don't don't think that it's impossible because someone has already done it. Oh man. Because if someone else can do it, then you can do it. There's no advantage but about it. It doesn't matter if you have a disablement or 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 not as smart or not as resourceful or 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 not as um, you know consistent. It, it can all it can all be worked on. It all it can all be practiced. The Super Bowl is practice. not the Super Bowl because they they went show up for one game and didn't practice for three year three to thirty years, you know it, it it it's the it's the work that you put in on the background it's the work that you put in in the morning and at night and then and then at lunch when you're eating your sandwich you're 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 reading something or learning something or 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 improving yourself in one way shape or form at all times. And that, that was, that was something that I didn't fully um, adopt. It was, it was mostly like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do it when it's, when, when I don't feel like doing something else. Mm -hmm. um, instead of me going to do the dishes, I'm going to go watch this YouTube video. I'm going to, I'm, but I'm, but I'm justifying it within myself because I'm learning and I'm growing in my business, but Oh no, now I just spent three hours watching YouTube. Now it's two o'clock in the morning and I still got to do these dishes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so don't get caught up in, in trying to justify what you're doing when you know you should be doing something else. Right. And that's, that's where the routine or the scheduling comes in. Yeah. You know, like, for, you know, I, I need a lot of, I need a lot of structure. You know, I need to schedule, have my week schedule, but I'm also the kind of guy where I'm like, I don't want to do the schedule right now. Yes. Like, I don't want to do this. I'm, you know, I'm well, an adult. I don't want to do this. I'm an entrepreneur because I made the choice. To I, can, do what I, I don't want to do what I don't want to do. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. So like, you know, if I need a rest day, if I'm going to take, you know, if I'm like, you know what, I've been burning a lot of oil or whatever, I'm not going to work on today. I'll take my day and I'll do it tomorrow. I always have my schedule. I, you know, it doesn't matter. At 10 o'clock, I get a notify. I get a notified say, hey, call 10 people. You know, and yeah. whether I do it or not is one thing, but I always have something to do. And then you get to choose what you want and what's what going you want to do and what you don't want to do. But then you're also making that same choice, um, knowing the repercussions of doing it or not doing it. And that's and that's that's honestly where those mistakes will come in. Uh, the, no one can avoid them. The, every business owner, um, entrepreneur will make mistakes, even even if you are extremely, extremely careful, you're following everybody's advice, successful, you will make a mistake and that mistake will hurt you. Um, it, it's, it's just the, it's just what you do after that mistake is made is what matters. Right. And when I when I make a conscious decision to not do an income producing activity, it's because I don't have the energy to do it. Like I don't like I can't call you sounding exhausted. You know what I mean? Right. And so I need to put that instead of putting that quarter in my business pot, I'm putting that quarter in my pot. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm gonna be work life balance to me is feeling balanced. You know, there's there always it is. Some, that, there's that's always what some, I was talking about earlier, man. It's a yang to the yang. You can't there is no such thing as work life balance. Right. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So, um, you know, everything we were talking about uh, practice, it, it, what you were just talking about reminds me of that video when it's like, man, we're talking about practice. You know, like, I miss practice. We're talking about practice, <laughs> man. But when you practice, like, if you're not making your two phone calls a day, you're not getting better at talking to people. You're not getting better at handling objections. You're definitely mm -hmm. not getting closer to making any sales in your business. And that's where a lot of people who are new business owners, especially in the network marketing space, they see the opportunity for fast growth. It's so easy to do that it's easy not to do. And then yes. they don't do it. And then next, you know, six months later, they're still a tourist in their business. And they're like, oh, this didn't work for me. And, you know, it is what it is. So whether you're a network marketing or any other business, even in landscaping, you can buy the equipment. But if you don't go in any yards and put any door hangers or knock any doors and say, hey, I just cut your neighbor's yard. Let me cut yours. You're not going to do any deals. 
Right. You're you're not gonna and it takes that uncomfortable spot to, to grow. If you're comfortable, you're not gonna grow, you're gonna keep doing the same thing. Right, exactly. So uh if you could run into your teenage self, what is the one thing you would teach them that could exponentially change their life forever? Nothing. Right on. Nothing. I, 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 I've made a ton of mistakes over my life. Trust me. I, I, I could be in a whole different position in my life, uh, making some different choices in my life. However, I do not, I do not believe in regret. Mm. I do not, I do not believe that it is a thing that you need to, um, think about. It's not something that you need to believe in. It's not something that you need to even have in your vocabulary reason is because what you did what you did you can't right. change it it's, it's in the past all you can do is make it better so what are you going to do next I mean, living in regret and what ifs and uh, uh fear of missing out fear fear of um oh man i, I if i had if i had invested a hundred dollars in bitcoin in 2012 when the doctors next to me were putting 50 dollars in the bitcoin in 2012 i wouldn't have any issues right but at the same time i don't regret it i don't regret it at all because now i'm in crypto and there's something called DeFi. it's going to be just as big as bitcoin so i didn't miss out i learned i'll have to i'll have to learn more about that i haven't heard about that there's so much opportunity getting pushed out there right now that like i'm just trying to focus on what i know and then mm-hmm. waiting to diversify more because I already got a lot, but you'll be my guy. <laughs> I hope I can be your guy. I hope I can be your guy because I'm doing some magic, dog. <laughs> so oh, hey, I like magic. magic. I believe in magic, so let's do it, man. Oh, magic is definitely a thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> when you know, when I look at that question, you know, I, I agree with you. It, it, it's really, I'm really good at beating myself up. Like I'm really good at beating I'm myself. I'm terrible up. at yeah. You know, like I I don't know I don't know if it's a military or if it's an upbringing thing, but you know, like between having high expectations of myself and the discipline, and then seeing what I do or don't do, and then like some of the biggest mistakes, whatever. I don't look at things like regrets anymore, but I would like I would go back and tell myself like, hey, even though I probably wouldn't listen to myself, knowing yeah. who I'm talking to. But yeah. like, I'd be like, dude, if I am you, listen to what I'm about to tell you, look in the mirror. You know what I mean? Like, look in the mirror and learn how to communicate with people. And, like, and, and, and learn how to how to be your own truth earlier. <laughs> that's what I, that, yo, that's what I'm teaching my daughter right now. She's five years old. But like, since, since, since she's laid on my chest, I'd always be like, you know, do you, rem- do you know who you are? Do you remember where you came from? You know, like, do you know you have power? You just got to find it. You got to find your power. You got to find That's it, man. And whether or not she thinks she's being Elsa from Frozen or being able to help people like a doctor or something like that. I I love the ancient, I you know, I love ancient aliens and, and, and the Mayan cultures and, and the spirituality of how they oh, work yeah. together as a village and stuff like that. Oh, and yeah. And if we're extensions of the sun and you're an extension of me and the reincarnation, this and that and the other, and I get the opportunity to have my little girl be something amazing before she even realizes it you know like i think that's powerful so if i could get out of my if i could go back and tell myself to get out of my own way just so i could just so i could scale faster i I don't want to i don't want my life to change but Mm -hmm. maybe my military experience would have been better if i knew more about myself knew about the traumas that my upbringing had on me and what Mm -hmm. baggage i actually had and not just like oh people don't like me you know like it is what it is. And, so, and you're absolutely right, man. 100% right. Uh, thank you. What? Okay, so what is one thing that you're doing in your business that makes you more successful than you know competitors or your peers that others may not know exists? Personal ability. I can definitely hands down say personal ability and the ability to explain it so that a three year old, a third grader understands. Um, because. This, this field that we're in when it comes to entrepreneurship, business, uh, stocks, bonds, insurance, real estate, um, investments in general, it's very complicated stuff. Very, a lot of moving pieces, it changes every day. 
You got to stay up with the times. You got to stay up with what's going on. You got to stay up with, even if you create something in that field, you have to stay on that to stay, make sure it stays on par with everything else that's going on because everything is intertwined within itself, like the cog and the clock. But no, it just has to be, it, it has to be personal ability, man. It has to be like, okay, I, I will follow up. I, I will make sure that you get the, 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 the applicable knowledge that's necessary to, to navigate this. It's, a, it's not something that you can just do on your own. I don't do it by myself. Right. I, I have a whole team and I have my own resources that I tap into. I have advisors left and right on, on crypto, stocks, bonds, all of it. I just that compile was- the information and make it acceptable or, 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 or relatable to the average person. And not only know that because I am an average person. I may have this, I may have that, I may have all these resources and knowledge behind it, but I'm just an average person. I could be worth a billion dollars today and I still have the same Levi's sweatshirt on. Right, right. And, you know, and, that's, and, I, want, and I want that to bleed into the common people. Like the, the, Warren Buffett was not wrong when he said that this is the largest distribution of wealth in the economic system. And, wow. it, and it's exactly what it is. And there's no advance much about it. It is here. And I want that to bleed into whoever I have the ability to touch. Right on. Right on. It reminded me of something that I lost. Yeah, it'll come to me. Something about going back to my younger self again. And I tell them, I, I would tell them just do your homework. If I had to tell them anything, I just tell them do your homework, do your project, and do your papers. Yeah. Only because it would just make things easier. <laughs> Outside of that, I wouldn't change, I wouldn't tell them anything else. You're right. Oh, and be better with money. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Be better with money, right? Learn financial literacy early. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. you'll start teaching it just to let you know. <laughs> I, I think I think being personable and caring and, and uh, oh, this is what you were talking about. Oh, okay. You're talking about having a team. Even right now, you have a team. You don't do everything yourself. Yeah. You know, like that was that's what I would go back and tell myself. I don't, you know, I don't know where this stems from, but I remember one guy. I was driving the truck, and he was like, "Oh, you know, do you have a coach or a mentor?" And I was like, "What?" It's like, yeah, like someone to help you with stuff. I'm like. Why would I need help with anything? He's like, well, someone to kind of just show you and like help you achieve your goals. I'm like, I know exactly what I need to do. I don't need help. You know what I mean? Now that, you know, like great confidence in myself and everything like that. But fast forward, I shut, I, I locked a lot of doors by having that closed mindset. I'd be like, what do you mean? I could, you know, I think I watched, I used to watch a lot of George Carlin growing up and he's a comedian. And I remember yeah. there was a skit where he'd be like, you know what? I don't like these self-help books, these self-help books. It's a book that you read to help you out. But guess what? If you could do it yourself, you didn't need help. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know, I just laugh. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, if you could do it yourself, you didn't need help. So, you know, self-help books, Jesus. And he's an older guy, you know, it's like, but I think, I think that definitely closed a lot of doors to my life and limited my relationships. And now I understand how, how valuable relationships are, not just for having a relationship, having a resource, a friend, a, a support, whether it's for business or, or that relationship, having good relationships, being open-minded to new relationships, help, being open-minded to people wanting to help you when they want to. There's nothing more frustrating for me, and I'm sure you feel the same way, as any parent feels this way, is when you know and you're trying to help this person or child be the accomplish whatever it is and they're like no i don't want it you know what i mean yes you're like all right man yes. well, i guess i guess you're just gonna be bitter for a while until you're ready yeah yeah and honestly that's how i i, I do that with my children like I, I there's some things that i make them do right like i know you're not gonna do that or you're gonna do that but a lot of things that my parents were very strict on me about okay you're going to do this i let my kids learn mm while they're young, so they can make those mistakes and learn, instead of them making those mistakes when they're 30. 
Yeah. Yeah. And for the people who are 30, you're still early. You're, you're oh, just, you're in a you're in your great position. Quarter. You know, you're in a like, great position. If you're 18, 19, 20 years old, listen to this, you have, you have like a good 10, 15 years on us that you're getting the knowledge that we took 15, 10, 15 years to learn. Yeah. So you take this and you run. You sprint. <laughs> you run. You sprint. <laughs> and you sprint until you can't go anymore because you're 18, 19, 20 years old. You can burn the candle at both ends. Yeah. We can't. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm, man, I'm starting to realize that. We're not that, making dude. it past 9 p.m. <laughs> Bro, I'm starting to realize that. I'm like, man, I'm not staying up late. I want to wake up early and like do right. my day. When I stay up late to have fun or do whatever, and then I'm like, oh, I sleep in, and I'm, it just messes with my whole Those day. Those are a whole day off, man. Those yeah. are a whole day off. And then we're, <laughs> then we're up old. again that night trying to catch up. <laughs> so, so, yes, if you're 18, 19, 20 years old, do anything and everything that your heart desired because now is the time to figure it out. Right. That, and if, that's I, if I did this at 18, 19, 20 years old, just uh, I'm going to start a business or I'm, I'm going I'm to try and do insurance. Or I'm going to try and do um, everything I did outside of the Navy. Oh, it would have been, I would have never went into the Navy. <laughs> right, right, right. And but at the same, go ahead. You need it. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs it. Right. And with that being said, yeah, go through all the experiences, live your life, identify, you know, try to find yourself and what you want, because the only way, only way you're going to discover what it is that you want out of life is by making these experiences, failures, and yeah. learning process. And then for everything else, you have Harrison and myself. That's what we're here. You know, I want to be investing in real estate. I want to do crypto. You know, I want to be a consultant. I want to be a thought leader like you guys. How do I do that? Well, guess what? There's people like us that you get to connect with that are making themselves available for you to learn and shadow and have them mentor you so you can be the best version of yourself the way that you want to do your business. Literally yes. catered towards your goals. Yes, um, yes. That is exactly why we created this community that we're in. It's for that purpose, guys. It's for that purpose that you don't have to hit the pitfalls that we hit. Even if you do hit the pitfalls that we hit, guess what? We got out of it. We're here. You can just ask a question. Oh, we Here's I ran into this hand. problem. What happened? Well, I did that last year. Guess what I did? Da 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 da. No, guess what? You have a solution. So use right. the resources you guys have, guys. Right, exactly. All right, and this is the last question. How has COVID affected you and how did you bounce back? Um it's actually helped. Um it, it like it's a horrible thing to say, but it, it's 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 gotten to the point because I've always been a tech a tech guy on um, like building computers and stuff and knowing how internet works and applications and now that everything's moving virtual I'm happy <laughs> I don't I don't have to leave my house right uh, um I'd rather do it in person you know it's a little it's a lot more personable and you can actually retain a lot more in person but at the same time you got Zoom you got phones you got you got Messenger you got text messages you have uh file distribution so pdfs or courses or videos or whatever so i think it I, it, it has helped me spread awareness and now more and more people are on the internet and more and more yeah. people are on social media so they can they, i get more exposure um but it, it has hurt um in a way of uh, innovation like some some innovative things that i would do like um like a like an in-person um, found uh, fundraiser or something like that because I also own, own own a holding company, so it's um, a lot of the lot, and some things in real estate has changed. You know, it hasn't. Some title companies haven't done the the full switch of virtual, um, you know, uh, remote remote stuff as far as title um, deeds and. and some investors don't even work virtually at all because they're still old school. They've been doing it for 35, 40 years. So some investors still want to come and see the property. I'm like, dude, I got everything you need right here. And he's like, I don't want to do it that way. I was like, well, okay, then I don't have to find somebody else or whatever. It, it, right. you know, it happens to boil down to it. But COVID is, I, it's a tragedy, you know, with all the lives that were lost. But economically, it's a blessing. Economically, it, it gives people opportunity to get off their ass. It gives people the opportunity to 
to, to come up with new ideas and new ways of, of connecting and building, bringing value to, um, to, to, to what they're bringing to the table, what product they're bringing, what service they're bringing, uh, whatever it is, it, it makes people dig in and, and actually become what they, what, what they want to be. Dude, that's a perfect, that, I'm going to seize that transition right there because for me, when COVID, I, I touched on it a little bit earlier, I moved around this time, I moved up from Virginia Beach uh, to Connecticut and we were supposed to close on our house. We had, we were under contract to buy a house in which we were supposed to close on the, on the 7th of January, two days before Christmas, Nicole's company gets bought out again, the second company she got bought out of in, sec, in six months. And they laid her off after they had moved her up here, created a position for her. We're under contract. We're supposed to close on a house in two weeks. She gets, the company gets bought out. So she doesn't have a place to work anymore. COVID's happening. Changes the lending criteria. We can no longer buy the house on which we were under contract before. We did, we did four extensions with these sellers. We're like, hey, we're finding more work. We're getting re-qualified. This is going to be great. This is where I, I, tapped into that old Navy diver, you know, like just going balls to the wall, doing everything, B and I meetings every single day in the morning, doesn't matter what time, just taking that day job. Love B and I, by the way, love B and I. Yeah. B and I is great. The, the structure is a great idea. Definitely choose your chapter appropriately. Every chapter has a character, uh, you know, is a culture and character of itself. So just be careful because, you know, your success in B and I really, depends on the chapter that you choose and how much business you guys are doing together. Um, but yeah, so like I was just turning and burning. I took the day job, you know, and then I did some more consulting work while doing other stuff. And it's like, I was exhausted, you know, like I was like, listen, this is the only way that we're going to live up here now is that we get, we, we get jobs or we make a certain amount of money so we can get a house and we can stay up here. There is failure is not an option. Like that old saying, if you want to take the Island, burn the boats, yeah, we were burning the boats and we're just, and now a year later, I'm in the house. We, we ended up finding a different house. We found it, uh, bought it as is, closed within like 30 days. We moved in the house in June. And then since June, you know, she's been doing consulting work. She's, you know, Nicole's a graphic designer, uh, social media marketer, consultant. So she's been, you know, building her local brand and working with clients here. I've been surviving, transitioning, day jobs, growing, building back up to being my own business person again, because I've had systems in place that I can tap into. But as far as prioritizing, putting food on the table, getting the house, you got to do what you got to do for the maximum return on your investment. And now that I'm at a position, I'm like, okay, now I can be the team leader that I was before. Now I can help people and be the, the coach mentor now that I got my shit together. Because I like Macklemore said in one song, he's like, preach on top of a mountain. People can't see through it, you know. Yeah, that's my right. Name, man, I that's right. Out sure. Twelve hundred, but yeah. Twelve hundred. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the things that really helps me stay humble and where I'm at is knowing what I've gone through through everything and to look back and say, "Wow, a year ago, we were busting our ass to make sure that we lived up here and created a community and, and lived here in Connecticut. Now we did it." So all you got to do is start from zero, burn the bridges and do everything that you can to throw yourself into what you're trying to do for as long as you can. And then you're going to make so much progress and momentum that you're going to be able to look back and you're like, wow, I did a lot. And you're going to be able to do more. Right. It never really hits you until you look back and notice how much work you actually did. And then it feels even better when you have testimonies of the people that you helped. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, brother, where can people follow you? Where can people find more information? How can they get a hold of you? Well, um, I have a, I have a uh, Instagram, and that's usually the easiest way to find me. Um, I have a Facebook and TikTok and, and, and an actual site and everything like that. But the easiest way to find me is on uh, Instagram. It's uh, at Harrison Gray Consulting. Cool. Awesome. And I'll make sure that I get all your links and information and put in the description. So when we blast it out there to the different platforms, people can just click on, on whatever. Yeah. You want to yeah. I definitely, like definitely want to go ahead and pump this out as well. Um, and Oh, here you go, guys. Here's a, here's a little, little nugget before we leave. 
Content is content is content. Content is exposure. And if you do video, you have three types of content. You have video, audio, and, uh, and transfer, transcription. So you can put it out there, guys. Just doesn't matter what it is. Just be you. Put what you know. Talk about what you know about. Don't talk about what you don't know about. And just put it out there, guys. Just put it out there. It's that simple. And one and one is get one and one and one and one and one and one and one. They all add up. You know what? They all add up to be a hundred thousand, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Well, well, man, I appreciate you having me on your show, man. And um, I look forward to doing a lot of business together. Yo, me too. Me too. And we should, we, let's do this. We can keep coming back, you know, keep doing guest appearances or, you know, vice yeah. versa. Check back in as, as big things happen within our businesses and anything that we learn. Yeah, no, we're definitely going to continue this on, man. I'm going to have you on Singularity. That's my podcast. I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to have that, man. We're going we're gonna to have to get it on. Right on, bro. All right, cool. Well, thank you so much for chiming in. Everybody, you've been listening to the LaFrance Paradigm with Harrison Gray as the good, as the co, uh, ha, as the guest. And, you know, I drank caffeine this morning. I've been, I, I cut off caffeine, but this morning I was like, yo, I think I'm going to cut a cup of coffee. So I get, I stumble sometimes. It's better. But everybody, you've been listening to the LaFrance Paradigm. This is where we learn and share strategies for an impact. They say courage is contagious and the rising tide lifts all ships. So help us help you help your friends. Take care. If you like this video, let the world know by hitting the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, every time I release them, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you get notified so you never miss one and you can always stay up to speed. And if you got any value, if you found any golden nuggets from today's video, drop them in the comment below so the next viewer can pick up exactly what you learned and we can all grow together. Because you know what they say, the rising tide lifts all ships and courage is contagious. So help me help you help your friends. Take care and thank you.